What was the, what was your inspiration for the character Farley? Yeah. Well, um, the the way the, that that uh, things worked for me, the the timeline is that uh, I was doing uh, what's called a panel cartoon. That is a single panel drawing that has copy under it, um, and. Uh, those cartoons I was doing in college, and then at the time, uh, Vietnam was a very big issue, and a lot of my subject matter was slightly political in uh, nature. And so we found that the college cartoons, which were running in about 300 papers, uh, started getting picked up by city papers, and they because they were interested in what was going on on campus, because the campuses is is, is where a lot of the uh, political dialogue w uh, was beginning during the Vietnam War and over whether or not we should be there. And the protests were organized out of, out of college campuses. So a newspaper editor wrote to me from Chicago, and he said that he was buying these single panel cartoons, but he thought that I could do a comic strip. And he encouraged me to do that. And to have an editor from a major uh, uh, Chicago newspaper write you a letter suggesting that, it clearly it's the sort of thing somebody would take to heart. And so um, I tried to develop a comic strip idea uh, in which the character was not locked into an everyday situation where it's not a, a dog and a, and a duck, you know, where they're talking back and forth every day and you make a joke. I wanted to have, if I was going to do a comic strip, I wanted to have some sort of political import, some relationship to the news. And uh, so what I did was I created a character named Farley who was in essence, on the road. He was traveling from place to place uh, as a way to, um, uh, to change the characters who were appearing in the strip. See, so I wasn't just stuck with one or two people. Okay. And uh, so I, Farley got his name uh, from the fact that um, um, I was trying to come up with a title that summed up the fact that he was going to be moving around. And there was a Steinbeck uh, book done a number of years ago. John Steinbeck did a book about traveling around the country with his dog named Charlie. And it was called Travels with Charlie, was the name of the strip, uh, or the book. And so I thought if I did a spin-off on that, I would find something that rhymed with Charlie. And the only two male names I could come up with were uh, Harley and Farley. And I, I liked Farley, and so it became Travels with Farley. That gave me not only a title for the strip, but it also put out the premise to readers that this guy was traveling. I just decided to localize the strip after 10 years. and Was it difficult going from syndication to just a, one newspaper? Well, it was a transitional period. Um, now I'm a staff member at the Chronicle, and uh, I, was, I was a little tired of 25 years of uh, freelance work and working through the mails uh, because you didn't, uh, you didn't really know anybody. Now I have a lot of contacts at the paper and, and editors that I can sit down and talk with and people that feed me material. And uh, I don't have that five-week lead time. I've got an overnight lead time. If mm -hmm. I, if I want to change tomorrow's strip, I can, I can sit down, draw it, get approval for it, and it'll be in the paper tomorrow. Here's one, you know, where we have Farley as the reporter. And uh, he's down at an excavation site in downtown. And this was something that was actually happening. They had dug down 20 feet into a gold rush era uh, structure. And so what you have is they have dug up an empty parking space, which was the last one that had been uh, seen in San Francisco in 130 years. You tend to find that, uh, particularly with me, is that uh, my strong, uh, my viewpoint is not really all that strong. It's more a case of uh, uh, giving um, an avenue t uh, to get viewpoints out. Uh, I have characters that are very uh, conservative and characters that are very um, um, uh, politically incorrect, and some that are politically correct. If you want to. PC, you know, yeah, and yeah. they aggravate each other, and they're slices of humanity, usually wearing fur or feathers, and then sometimes real people. Yeah. Um, I also, I'm very involved in local history. I love local history. Mm -hmm. I've been involved for 25, 30 years in Sausalito history and, um, and uh, other hobbies, cars okay. and uh, Well, funny people. you should mention that. 
I happen to have right here. Oh, Let me see if we can get this This is picture. my life. <laughs> this, this is your life, Phil. Uh -huh. This is an interesting picture that I picked out here. This, uh -huh. Tell me about this now. Well, that's 1977. That's Sue, uh, my wife, and our two kids, Philip and Stacy, and the little dog there is Puka. And we were living at the houseboats. You see the old swayback ferry boat Issaquah there. Right. And we were just setting off on a trip across uh, the United States. Uh, we had a trailer that went behind that car, and um, it was built in 1929. The car was built in 28, and uh, we uh, put the kids and the dog in the car, and we took off uh, for Maine. And it took us uh, a month and a half to get there. <laughs> and a good time was had by Oh, all. yes. It took yeah. us uh, two months to get back. Yeah. driven by or walked by this site a hundred times. This is the old uh, mine shaft that has been locked up since 1910 with an iron door that was put on it. And we're here today to go inside and take a look inside with uh, your accompaniment, hopefully. Um, now we've got two fellows from, uh, uh, from Public Works, Dan Zapponi and Kent, who are going to break the lock because we don't have a key anymore. And uh, We'll be able to go in after that. This hasn't been opened in a number of years. Uh, was originally put on to keep kids out of there. We know that Earl Dunphy, who was a former city council okay. member, uh, used to play in here back around the turn of the century when he was a little kid growing up in Old Town. Okay, the lock is broken. The door is open. Great. Here we go in. Now this only goes in a little ways. We don't know whether it's a collapsed mine shaft or if it's, uh, uh, this was as far as they dug. And we're still not certain about what they were digging for. But uh, there was rumors that it was manganese I'm going to have to put on my hood because of the water. But look, here's a clue. It may have been an aluminum mine. This is where they had these uh, preformed uh, cans of uh, aluminum, which they then uh, would dig out and send to the, uh, to the soda works companies. A little bit of uh, historical litter. What I'd like to ask you at this time would be, would you mind showing us a little bit on the drawing board as to what your viewpoint of San Quentin has been since you had a little tour today? Well, I see, that's going to be quite a challenge now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I think we can, well, okay. I'll do something here. Okay. okay. Let's, let's see, you know, your impression of, of San Quentin. Okay, well, um, maybe I'll take, uh, uh, take one of the, uh, the bears here. Um, now, when I'm, when I'm drawing the strip, I tend to work, uh, uh, I usually start at the top of the, of the drawing. I don't, I don't uh, block it in too much. And of course, there's a pencil drawing first, but this is as if we're going to ink. Um, when, you're, um, when I draw the strip, I usually start up on the top, um, in this case, uh, with the bear. His, uh, we'll do his ears and then his, uh, his eyes. Eyes, eyes are always a primary uh, portion of any drawing uh, because they really indicate what uh, the mood is of the, of the character. Um, so here we see, uh, this will have to be Alphonse, one of the bears. He seems to stumble into trouble a lot. So in order to get him into San Quentin, I'll have to have him... Uh, well, those eyes to me look like a, a eyes of astonishment. Yeah. Well, he is. He's a he's a little bit surprised. Um, I have him here. He's holding his uh, food tray. 
we went into the uh, into the one of the dining halls a little earlier. Any similarities to the Fog City Diner? The Fog City Dumpster, you mean? The Fog City <laughs> Dumpster. Let me get that one correct. <laughs> well, I don't want to uh, say anything disparaging about the quality of the food, but um, um, I'll. Uh, one thing I think that everybody can agree on is that uh, you're really producing kind of an institutional uh, food here. Um, bears have uh, very low haunches and a small tail. Uh, so they tend to be a very uh, 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 top-heavy, or, or uh, rather a, a bottom-heavy uh, uh, character with, um, you know, their legs are, uh, are pretty short and their arms are, are long. And, uh, of course, mine are all uh, bipedal, so they're always standing upright. And so here he is with his uh, breakfast. He's got his little green and white uh, uh, milk container here. He's got his bear claw. That's kind of appropriate, huh? <laughs> <laughs> There's his bear claw. Mm -hmm. Two pieces of toast. And uh, he's got a little bit of uh, oatmeal or something over here. He's not quite sure what it is. Oh, so you did see our meals this oh, morning. Oh, yes. Huh? I saw the meal this morning. <laughs> and I guess you get a, a little tub of peanut butter if you request it. Huh? So here's Alphonse. Wondering about. Since you use a, a, a lot of animals for your characters, right. have you ever uh, considered a video of any type, any sort? Um, well, I've thought about that, but you know, there's uh, you've got to have a really strong uh, following in order to. <laughs> Here he's wondering if uh, this isn't the same meal that they've had for the last fifty years. <laughs> I'll give a little signature down here. 